guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks. I'm starting a new thing today called Motion 360. And basically the concept here is that I'm gonna share tips and pearls, um, knowledge that I've learned from being in the industry and building a number of cars over the years to hopefully shed some light, uh, make things easier and um, allow you guys to have some of the same knowledge I have. I feel like I've learned so much over the past uh, two, three years owning this business and definitely the last decade or more of building cars. I've uh, dove into this and self-taught myself a lot. So I retain a lot of the knowledge um, because it hits home for me since I uh, learned it myself and learned the hard way. Um, anyways, over the next uh, days, weeks, months, years, uh, I hope to share a lot of those tips and pearls and make your builds easier because that's what we're here for. Um, we have a lot of awesome products to solve problems for you, but they only do as much good as you have knowledge to apply them to your car or build. So hopefully I'll be able to share some information that I've taught myself, that I've failed at, that I've learned and done well, as well as some info that other people have passed on to me and has worked really well. So this weekend I uh, stayed in the shop, kind of like a hermit, and uh, built some Gen 5 stainless turbo headers. Uh, this platform's so new that nobody really had one that fit what we were building. So uh, it kind of raised an eyebrow with me. I'm like, man, I've learned so much from people over the years and videos and uh, you know, I'm a self-taught TIG welder. So I'm still learning every day, but I think I've gotten better and my craft is coming along. But uh, I figured I would share with you guys to hopefully uh, make things a little bit easier for you. So these are the Gen 5 headers I built this weekend. Um, they fit a platform and we'll be talking more about these in the very near future. Um, but stainless is really temperamental, um, but it's a lot of fun to build once you start get the tools and techniques so down. First and foremost for me, the biggest game changer is when I learned about using the proper filler rod. About this, um, I was using 16th TIG filler rod. And basically what that requires you to do is put so much heat in the, the headers that you actually put a ton of heat in it and take the color out of the welds because you're having to weld at like 70, 80 amps to get that melted in there and actually get good penetration. But since we have good fit up on these, we'll actually use this 32 stainless TIG wire. Um, it's actually safety wire. We get it from Moroso. It comes in these big cans. So basically you just pull it out and cut it off. And that allows you to fill the very you know, minute gap. And since we're not welding very thick metal, you don't need a whole lot of filler rod. So that, what that allows us heat wise is to weld at like 45 amps. So I'll weld anywhere between 45 and 50 amps. Everybody has their own technique, whether they just dab the filler in, um, some guys pulse it, some guys uh, use the pedal. I'm not here to debate that, but this is a game changer. It allows you to weld so much cooler. The other thing that is huge is when you're welding a whole series of different joints in the same header because you're back purging it, um, you don't want to take two hours between welds to let it cool down because if you start getting too much heat, you lose your color in the welds. And we all know we want to keep color in the welds so we keep the stainless properties. So my buddy Steven Eads taught me this from Rock Solid Motorsports. Um, just take an air hose and blow off the weld between. You don't want to put water on it because you can actually temper the material. But if you spray air on it, it'll actually cool a weld off real quick. And then you start with a fresh tube for each next series in the weld. Game changer. So when it comes to welding the actual flange, this is where a lot of people get in trouble because you put so much heat in it, you warp the shit out of the flange. Um, we used to weld the entire backside of the flange and now you can see we actually just tack, um, just for a little bit of added strength. We're tacking them in the car so we just weld them out with small uh, strip welds. But we actually weld the backside of the uh, header. This one hasn't been ground flush. Um, Basically what that does is it creates a nice smooth transition for the air so you don't have a bunch of trapped air pockets and corners and gaps. Um, so it smooths it, it welds easier so you're putting less heat into the header most of the time. And then we just take a belt grinder and smooth it when we're done. Uh, people have different uh, ways of smoothing that out. But generally you don't get a whole lot of warpage across the flange. You kill two birds with one stone with uh, transitioning that weld and uh, accomplishing sealing your header up. And it's a lot easier than back purging because you're actually welding into the stainless flange. So you don't really need to back purge the whole tube while you're doing this process. We use what's a, we use a 14 monster cup. We'll use different variations like 12, 18. Um, but what this allows you to do when you're welding these headers, we'll actually take them apart tube by tube, uh, finish weld them and then put them back together. But some you can get away without. Um, 
with having a big old uh, cup like this, you can actually stick the tungsten out quite a bit. And what, when this comes in handy is when you're doing your collectors. Uh, you can get into crevices and weld areas that you used to not be able to weld so that you can put your turbo star um, or whatever style you use inside really easy. We'll actually cut the collector off. But when we put the collector on, we can actually get back down in there to seal everything up. Properly. And finally, um, the last tip I wanted to give today was uh, denatured alcohol. Some people use acetone. Uh, the people that taught me um, online, I guess, uh, they taught me to use denatured alcohol. So what I'll do is put it on a uh, clean uh, paper towel and make sure you wipe your filler rod off. Filler rod, whether it comes out of a tube or it comes out of one of these safety cans, um, is always dirty. And a lot of times that's where you'll introduce your um, impurities into your weld. Also, make sure you weld, um, wipe down your material. I'll blow it off and then I'll wipe it down with denatured alcohol because when you cut the material, you might introduce foreign um, types of metal, which will not be good, um, as well as oil, cutting fluid, all kinds of different crap. So cleanliness is godliness. Um, and chances welding. are, if you've been TIG welding for a while, you know, um, but with stainless, a sharp, especially this real thin stainless, a very sharp tungsten is really key to uh, a good weld. If you have a blunt one, it's gonna spread the heat around so much and it's really tough to make these precise little joint welds. Um, because at the end of the day, I'm the type that I want my under hood to look as good as the outside of my car. So when I open the hood on my car, I want people to look at my headers and be like, wow, he actually cares. He did a really good job. The craftsmanship's really good. Um, I'm kind of humbled by a lot of the people in the industry how good they are at fabrication and welding headers but i always try to do the set i'm doing now better than the set before so hopefully that helps you thanks for tuning in to the first motion 360 more to come